And now we're going to get ready for meditation. And we have some meditation music, and then we will move right into meditation. So I invite you all to get comfortable in your chairs, or chairs, your space. I just ask for you to take in a deep breath and exhale out as you wiggle down into your seat and allow your body to relax and to let go. Just feel yourself letting go. Anything that's on your mind or heavy upon your heart, let it just fall down to the ground. For this is your time of conscious awareness about the power and the presence of God that is within you. It has been written, the Christ in you is your hope of glory. Breathe in the Christ energy and exhale anything out that is not of the Christ, that is not of God's good. Just breathe in and relax, let go. Prayer time is extremely important. It sets the intention for our day and for our life. We can't sweat the small stuff. Again, I ask you to visualize this incredible luminous light within you, a golden light of God consciousness. And let us affirm, I am one with God. I am one with God. There's nothing in this world can separate me from God. Wherever I am, I am standing upon holy ground, for God is there. God is with me with every breath that I take. Keep breathing and allow yourself to go deeper and deeper within to your inner chamber of the Most High within you. That is the place 
of knowing. Knowing God. Knowing that no matter what appearances may be, God is there. No matter what we're experiencing in life, we ask God to work out the details. And I know the power and the presence of God is descending upon you and wrapping a cloak of love and comfort and wisdom around you. Allow yourself to feel that cloak or that coat of many colors. God is always with you, for God has always been with you and will forever throughout all of eternity be a part of you. Let yourself know and accept with every part of your being that everything is happening for a reason and a purpose. And God is present, unfolding your good in your everyday life, in every circumstance, in every experience. For there is no separation there is only God, and God is the real, true, and only power, and so it is. Amen. Please sing, I dreamed of rain and the rains came. I dreamed of rain and the rains came. beautiful. How beautiful. You guys are incredible. That's all I'm going to say. Absolutely incredible. Every time I come here, I feel so greatly loved. And I do just bring just unflowing love through me because of how unique each and every one of you are. You're just beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. And today we're going to talk about the, our five principles that we affirm every week. And I thought it would be a good Sunday um, because it is the fifth Sunday of the month. And we know Green Bay Packers are playing, so I will, I will make sure that I do not 
lose myself is a nice way to say it. So the first um, lesson that we have uh, is uh, that God is the one and only true power in this universe. Everything is false. Everything outside of God is false because God is sustaining and supervising and God is the substance of everything that is. It could not be here if the substance of God, which is the energy of God, was in it. If it's not here, then it's not here. Now, a lot of people, you know, believe in the devil and evil. And I believe evil happens. Just look at our, our conditions of the world globally today. People have evil thoughts. And then they act out on them, and then they do evil things, right? And a lot of people, you know, think about, you know, the devil. Well, there isn't a devil with horns and a tail and a pitchfork. That does not exist. But, you know, when we fear, it takes our consciousness away from the consciousness of God and the truth that we believe in. So what we need to do is, remember, fear stands for false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. You know, we could get caught up in the moment, and we could have the fears and the doubts and the insecurities, but we do not have to live there. We have these principles in our mind and in our hearts to fall back on and know that God is at work. And for us to affirm that there's only one power and one presence, and it's God. And God is working behind the scenes, no matter what the appearance may look like. But you know what? We're human. We're fully human. We're fully divine. You know, but we got to get out of the fully human fear state or what if state. What if, what if, what if, what if. You know, we get, and that's all about fear. Or it's about controlling the situation. God is really in charge. But what if we took the time and say, I believe in one power, and that is God. I believe that God is working in and through this situation for me. I am believing that God is divinely guiding me and inspiring me in regards to what the next right thing is for me to do in this circumstance. Am I right? But when the rubber hits the road, we got to practice it. We got to practice it. We can have our moments of doubts and insecurities and, you know, cussing and kicking stones and rocks and cans across the street. But we got to come back to ourselves and remind ourselves there is a divine essence within us. And that is step number two, our second principle. Not a lot of churches go and say, the Christ in you is your hope of glory. What does that mean? When you hear that, you've heard it a lot. The Christ in you is your hope of glory. What is the Christ? It's a consciousness. It's a God consciousness. So when we're going through challenging times, we have to stop and breathe out the fears and the doubts and the insecurities and breathe in the light of God because we want to be illuminated and we also want to call forth the Christ essence within us to come forth, to vibrate through us so that we know what to do. We are like musical instruments to God. Sometimes we have to fine tune ourselves to be in the right consciousness or tuning into a radio station. You don't want where all that static's at, do you? You want clear reception. And I don't know a lot of churches that go around outside of unity saying you're a child of God and you're a divine heir to the kingdom. Thank God for Charles and Myrtle Fillmore that you're divine heirs to the kingdom. We don't need to really suffer, 
But sometimes our suffering is to help us teach something to us. Or maybe the people around us. Are we learning from our circumstance? Because the Christ in us wants us to fine tune the instruments that we are. You know, it's like tuning up the guitar, tuning up the violin, tuning up the piano. It's going to be off key if we don't do the fine tuning. And what helps us to fine tune is when we do go into prayer and meditation to fine tune our thoughts, to get rid of what the thoughts that we don't really need or want or that really support us on our spiritual path. This is why these five principles are so important to us. You know, also Charles and Merle Fillmore taught about the omnipresence, okay, of God. But they also taught about the omnipotence of God. And that is the full power. God is all power. And the only power there is. And when through prayer and meditation, we fine-tune ourselves to that infinite power, the mind of God. There's only one mind, and it is the mind of God, but through our Christ nature and prayer and meditation, what happens is, is that we open up a pathway to the mind of God, and clarity and illumination comes to us. I know sometimes it doesn't happen fast enough, but that could just be me. You know, I wanted everything yesterday. But we are divine beings. And there's an exercise that I invite you to try. Whether you're here at church or you're just out sitting at a coffee shop and you see people sitting there, see from your heart a light go to their heart knowing that God is in them, that the God in you is lighting up the God in them. It is a powerful exercise. Or when you're in a mall, just think, look around and go, oh my God, look at all these children of God. They're not just people. They're spiritual beings like us. Nobody's, we might be different humanly, but we are not different spiritually. Each of us has the drop of God inside of us if not, we would not be here. You know, in, the, in, in Genesis, we were created in the image and likeness of God, and God is spirit. You know, how many of us have been taught that God is this guy with this long flowing beard and long, continuous white hair sitting at a desk keeping score on us? It doesn't work that way, folks. God is energy. And your thoughts are energy. That's why we have to make sure that our thoughts are in alignment with God. We want God thoughts. It's going to take us farther and further and deeper into the well of the living waters. And that's the living God. God is energy. There's a spark of divinity within each and every one of us, and that is the Christ in you. That is your hope of glory. We don't have to be praying to a God outside ourselves. We need to be praying to the God within us so that we can expand the awareness within us and in our own consciousness to feel that power of God at work within us, to see and be a witness to the power of God working in and through our lives and through this universe. It gives us the experience of God. Why do we all come to church? We want an experience of God, and we want to learn how to do it, right? I know that's why I show up on Sundays, and I do these sermons for myself. You guys are just the added gifts. <laughs> Keeps me accountable. <laughs> you know, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before everyone. Everyone. We don't have to hide our light. 
We are here because we want to live our life authentically. And in order for us to live our life authentically, we must get rid of the garbage that holds us back and holds us down and that covers up our light. Am I right? Nobody really wants to play small. Once you get a taste of stepping out of your comfort zone and knowing, wow, I did that. I walked right through that fear. There's a confidence that walks right through us and in us and stays with us. And when the next challenge comes along, it says, you can do it. You can do it. And you start remembering, hey, I walked through that one fear. I can walk again through this fear. You know, we, we, you know, we are not asked to let our light shine. We are mandated by God to let our light shine. We are mandated by God to let our light shine. You know why? Because God wants to be seen more. And if God can be seen more through your actions, through your words, through the vibration of your body, the presence of who and what you are, God is putting more good into the world. You know, these people at war, it's all about ego. It's all about ego and, and, and power and control. One power. One power. And I'm sure all holy books talk about the one power. God. God didn't say go to battle. God didn't say kill those people. No. We got to come from love. God is love. Outside of God being loving and compassionate, God is the love in this universe that exists within each and every one of us in that Christ nature of ourselves. God is the all of us. God is the all of us. And you know, our third principle is thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. So what does this really mean? Whatever we're focused on, giving more energy to is going to be made manifest. If it's worry and concern, that's don't be surprised if it manifests. If you're thinking good thoughts and God's taking care of this and I'm trusting God, I Jesus, I trust in you. I trust in you to help me walk through this. You know what? We're going to walk through it. If those are the thoughts in our mind, he's the master teacher. He's the master teacher. Why wouldn't we listen to him? Remember, when he was born of Mary, he was Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. He was not known as Jesus Christ then. Throughout his entire ministry, he was not known as Jesus Christ until he resurrected. He is demonstration. And every time we demonstrate, we resurrect. Does that make sense? We come out of the tomb of darkness and we step into the light. So the more that we build this personal relationship with God, the greater we are going to be in letting our light shine. People, when they see our light, they might have to put foster grants on. <laughs> oh, wow, she's so bright, I had to put my sunglasses on. Wouldn't it be awesome, everybody walking around on planet Earth with sunglasses because it's so bright? Hey, did you turn the light off? Yeah, but it's so-and-so shining over there that, you know, it's creating the light in the room. Oh, I love this stuff. And you know what? If You know, there, there's uh, towards the end of the year, Susan Larkin is going to be doing a treasure mapping. And sometimes when we take the time to cut out pictures 
and post it on a poster board or piece of wood, making a collage of what we want to manifest in our lives. And we put it in a place in our home where we can see it every single day. You know what it's doing? It's programming our subconscious mind to attract it. It's powerful stuff. They call it treasure mapping or masterminding. And then plus two, you know, nobody's going to laugh at you for cutting things out and pasting them like little kids do. It's going to happen or drawing. Yeah. We are so worthy. We are so worthy. You know, we, we don't want to go into the wilderness consciousness. We really don't. You know, that's where we think, you know, we're being deprived. But if we're in the wilderness consciousness and we're holding on to the thought that God is going to get me through this, God's going to get us through it. We don't have to beg God. We don't have to beseech God. We just have to affirm God. That God, it's the power of our thoughts and it's the power of our spoken word. That's what life is about. What are we speaking? We can all clean up our verbiage a little bit. And I'm not just talking cussing. You know, I'm talking about negative thoughts, feelings, and opinions, and criticisms, and judgments of ourselves and of other people. That's the stuff we need to get rid of. We are not failures. We are children of God. We are children of God. You know, and... Our, our fourth principle that we live by is, you know, prayer and meditation. And I can't emphasize enough that if you start your, your day with prayer and meditation with God, asking for help throughout your day to guide you and to direct you, you're setting forth the energy to go before you. I, one affirmation that I've been saying for years is the spirit of truth goes before me, making my way easy, joyous, successful, productive, and prosperous in every way. I think I got it all covered. But that's how I want to start out my day, don't you? And I say that a couple times, and throughout the day it will pop in my head, and I reaffirm it, reaffirm it for myself. I know it's always there, but I just have to remind myself of what's already here inside of me. We are not separate from God. Only our thoughts make us think we're separate from God. And go to, in the Bible, in the Psalms, it talks about the inner place of the Most High. And in meditation, that's where I try to take you every week, is to that inner place of the Most High the inner chamber. Nobody can touch you there. Nobody knows what you're thinking there. Nobody knows what you're asking for there. Isn't that beautiful? It's extreme privacy when you go within. All you have is the power, the presence, and the light of God in that inner chamber. Let's bust open those doors. And let's say, let my light shine, God, today as bright as it can be. Prayer and meditation, I believe, is called really in my book, Holy Communications. Holy Communications. It's a time where we talk to God, but we also have to shut up and listen to the silence. And when we're in that silent mode, we're allowing the vibration of the Christ, the divinity within us to vibrate higher because we're allowing it to come more through us. And then changes are going to happen in our lives and in ourselves that we might have never expected. One day you'd say, my God, I don't think that way anymore. That's not my belief anymore. That's not who I am anymore. 
that girl don't live here no more. She left a couple decades ago. That guy don't live here no more. We got to let it go. Prayer, you know, this whole movement was created on prayer and meditation. You know, if it wasn't for Myrtle Fillmore's, you know, extraordinary healing, I don't know if there'd be a unity today. Maybe somebody else might have thought about it or got that message. But maybe we would have had to wait longer. But I feel like we are blessed to have these teachings. And you know what? We have to live this truth that we know. I remember one time reading, wouldn't it be great that we don't buy another book until we're practicing everything we already know? <laughs> Isn't that true? God, where would libraries be? <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? We know what we can do. And, I, you know, just let the, the, you know, what, you know, our feelings are not facts. It's a vibration of energy moving through us to tell us how we're experiencing this situation. It's just like when joy and laughter and love and compassion and understanding, it's a vibration that's going moving through us to make us more attuned to who and what we are and how we perceive the world. Don't you want more of that? I sure do. I sure do. I want to stop judging and criticizing myself. I'm going to begin with me. Because when I stop doing that towards me, I'm not going to do it towards anybody else. I'm going to go, oh, God bless them. You know, they're really going through a hard time. God is helping them now, affirming that God is helping them right now through that situation. I know it's, it can be challenging, especially during very challenging times in our life or when trauma is happening. And, but we have to fall back on what we know is the truth that's going to set us free. Because that will open up the gates, the floodgates, the windows of heaven, and have the abundance of God's substance pour upon us, rain upon us, and move through us like lightning. And all of God's people say, Amen! Amen. Woo! That was a good one. <laughs>